Hello everyone, my name is Bruno Capuano, I work as a cloud advocate at Microsoft and today I want to talk with you about Copilot and plugins. Plugins are a great way to add functionality, new features to ChatGPT using plugins or even Copilot like Windows Copilot, Bing Chat and more. And hey, we can code this. I am going to show samples in .NET and Python. I am going to show how you can run this locally or even using code spaces in the cloud. And what do you need? Basically, a plugin is a set of APIs that you can use and also a JSON file where you describe what you need. Let's take a look and let's start. So let's take a look how we can use plugins in ChatGPT. And let's see how we can use this one in ChatGPT. Remember, in order to do this, you need to have ChatGPT Plus and also be part of a dev list to work with plugins. So let's copy the URL of the plugin, it's running locally, and let's add the plugin here to the environment. I am going to enable plugins, go to the store. I am going to define that I want to use my own plugin and hey, I only need here the URL. It's going to locally validate and try to get my plugin, and there it is. I have a Bruno Pet catalog literally working here. So right now I can ask questions around my pet. So this will query my plugin locally and it will, we can see here that it's queried the plugin locally and it's going to basically say that there are five pets in the plugin and the pets are a dog, a cat, a dog, a car, a cat. And by the way, all of this information is here in a big JSON file that I use as a backend in the plugin. Let's take a look at the code. Let's take a look at this net project, C Sharp project, to see how it's working. So first of all, this is a new project. The type of the project is a web core API. So what we are having here is an API. We are going to enable cores at the beginning, of course, because we need to enable the communication between the chat GPT and our local host server. And hey, if you run this in other places, you need to change this to the correct URL. We also need Swagger basically to enable the discovery of the API endpoints that we are going to have in our project, general information about this, how we have, then enable Swagger, this is what we've seen before, and a couple of important things. So we are going to publish the main information of our plugin is going to be defined in a file called well-known AIPlugin.json. And this file is part of the properties of the project and here we have the file and the only thing that we are doing in post when we are running the, the plugin is replace this host with the current URL. So, we, so the plugin will know where to get this information. Then this plugin is not going to publish the Swagger endpoint as part of the, the endpoint as part of the Swagger definition and we have the get all pets, the add pets and more. And because we are working with JSON's files, we have a class to represent the owner and we have a class to represent the root for the pets. And by the way, this is the pets information. This is Buddy, which is a dog, Labrador, six years old, black, and the owner is Michael Johnson, fictitious person. And there are several ways that you can run this project. This is the main repo. Feel free to fork it to make it your own and run these things. But you can clone it locally and run the project locally, install everything, or we can use code spaces for this. So let's create a new code space, which is basically going to create a full dev environment on the cloud. If you only need to use this, you only need a GitHub account. And once we have the code space, let's see how it works. Once the code space is created and install of all of the plugins and the necessary dependencies, we are going to have a full dev environment on the web that will allow us to basically test our plugin, our code our plugin, without the need to install anything local. So I can go to the run and debug menu and run the project. There are two projects here, so let's run the plugin. When the project is compiled and open and, and enable, it's going to create a new website that is going to be available and hey, I am going to be able to open the website. It's not loading here because we don't have anything on the root, but we can know, we can explore and get information for the plugin. So important here is to realize, is to see that the port that we are using 
for debugging need to be public, just get here by default and change it to public if it's created by default. But otherwise, we can copy this URL, go back to ChatGPT, go to the plugin store, develop to your own plugin, paste the URL, and it's going to get the manifest information for the web plugin. There it is, the pet catalog, and then it's going to install. Of course, this is a not verified plugin, so we need to agree to a couple of warnings, and that's it. We have here the pet catalog, and I can basically say, what pets does Bruno have? This is going to query the web plugin, and based on the JSON file with the pet list, is going to give me the response with the with the pets that Bruno have. And there it is, Ace the puppy and Goku the cat are part of my pet list. So I can see here the request, the response, and how the model read and create an answer. And if you are a Python developer, we also have you covered. Here in the Azure samples, we have a plugin written in Python that you can also test quickly using a code space I have the code space up and running here. It's a Python API to basically show a list of hiking products. So I can run this. It's going to open the URL. Take a look here. I'm going to change the port to be public. And once I have this, this port, 8000, let's copy the port, the local address. Let's copy the URL and go for ChatGPT, create a new chat and add this new plugin. So let's go to plugin, plugin stores, develop your own plugin, add a new one, add the plugin, and hey, a couple of warnings again, and I have the plugin installed for me. And important, from here, I can go to the store, I can go to install, and I can uninstall my test plugin if I want to get new versions, release new version, or t test something else. And how about testing if you don't have access to ChatGPT Plus? So this is an important one. We can use Semantic Kernel to do this. I already have up and running the local plugin demo here, the one that we see in .NET, and let's run also a console project using semantic kernel to see how we can do this. So first of all, I'm going to do the step by step so we can take a look at this. But first of all, what we need to do is we need to create, I'm going to create a logger factory here. So that's kind of the main step here. So we started the plugin using semantic kernel, create a logger factory. Then I want to create a kernel. The kernel is going to load my settings Cool thing about semantic kernel, I can use Azure OpenAI services or OpenAI APIs to work with this. I'm going to use, in this case, Azure OpenAI, and then I have to load and test my plugin. So this is my local plugin running in the port 5100. It's going to load the definition. It's going to import the ChatGPT plugin skills. And then I am going to create stepwise planner using the kernel, ask a question about how many cats are in the DV, create a plan with this, and I'm going to invoke this. So after a couple of seconds, uh, it's going to show me the result. So the result is there are currently four cars in the Bruno pet log. And a cool, cool thing here that I can do is I can also take a look at how many steps it, will, it took the the skills to be solved and what are the skills that can be used. I can run and play around with several skills. So this is a great way to test your plugins. And that's it. We've seen how you can create your own plugins with samples in Nets, Copilots, running locally, running on code spaces in the cloud. And remember, plugins are going to be an important, a very important piece of all of the future of Copilots. Thank you very much.